guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to film a video on surviving your first trimester with type 1 diabetes. When I was pregnant I actually never come across many of these videos and the videos I did come across for me they weren't that helpful so I wanted to make my own version of these videos and give you my ways, my tips on how I survived my first trimester which led to me carrying and delivering a beautiful healthy baby girl. If you don't know already I'm coming up to a year postpartum with my baby girl and over the past month or so I'd say I've been reflecting and just um, thinking about my life and how it's changed. Um, what things I'd maybe do differently and so I just wanted to put together a video because I, when I was thinking about my first trimester um, being a diabetic I remembered how hard it was and what things that I wish I'd known going into a pregnancy um, with diabetes. So I am also a pump user so some of these might not be as relatable to you if you're a pen user um, but this is everything from a pump that I've experienced and I know. I'm just going to get into it and try not to ramble. This is my second time of trying to record this. I got like five minutes into the other one and it just didn't make sense. So the first thing I want to say for surviving your first trimester is to make sure and ensure that you have a really good team and a really good relationship with your healthcare team. I have a really good relationship with my nurses, not necessarily the consultants. Um, but I do get on really well with my nurses and they were really supportive and they really helped me survive my first trimester and gave me all the support I could have ever possibly dreamed of um, carrying my first child. If you don't have this, I think it might be a bit harder. My team have always known that I've wanted to be a young mum. I'm only 20 and I've had my first baby already. Um, so they knew the pregnancy was something that was on my mind. And so when I told them, it wasn't a massive shock. But I had only been on my pump about three months max, um, so they needed to help me and show me the best ways to change basal rates and stuff. And if I didn't have that good relationship with my team, I think maybe my pregnancy and the initial getting into my pregnancy would have been very hard. You also really need to ensure that your A1C is of a really good low level. Mine was slightly higher than what they nationally expect and want. Um, however, my A1C was easily attainable to get it to the perfect pregnancy like rate. Um, I think initially my A1C was 7.5 which is on the higher side. I will find the st statistics and put them over this video for you. Um, but yeah I was on my way to a really good A1C so they weren't annoyed, they weren't um, worried or anything and I just basically had to ensure that my blood sugars were pretty much spot on from day one. Um, I think if they were different or if I had had blips or stuff like that, then maybe it would have been a bit different. Um, but you just really need to make sure your A1C is good. So even if you're not, even if you don't speak to your healthcare provider about wanting to be pregnant, um, which I strongly suggest you do, you need to know yourself that you need to have a good HbA1c, and if you really want to keep it under wraps that you want to start a family or try for your family then you really need to work towards getting an A1C in your healthcare. People will do that for you. They will really help you. And I feel like on a pump, it was so much easier for me to do this. Maybe on a pen, it's a different story, but I, I haven't um, experienced that. So I cannot give you information on that. But being on a pump, I just needed to make sure all my blood sugars were super tight, super on target. Just make sure your A1C is at a pretty, pretty good level and your health team are pretty happy with it as well. You also really need to be prepared to tell your family and maybe your workplace as soon as you find out as well. Um, this is something I didn't do and if I fell pregnant again and, and I'll go back to work um, by the time that I get pregnant again, um, it's something that I'm going to need to do. How I didn't lose my job in my first trimester, I don't know. My health was, with having a pregnancy and my insulin rates constantly changing, I was very dangerously low for a lot of the time in my first trimester and a lot of the time I would not wake up. So that meant I was late for work on so many different occasions. Like my shifts were always early shifts. Um, so like 7am starts and I never, I didn't wake up. I just couldn't, even if my boyfriend tried to come and wake me up, I just couldn't wake up. So I'm surprised I didn't lose my job, but you do need to be prepared to tell your family and work soon, just so they can accommodate and help you and just make this pregnancy as stress 
free as possible um, because it really just stressed me out until I told Wit that I was pregnant then they were a little bit more understanding they knew what was going on and I also didn't lose my job which was a bonus another thing I want to say is you also really need to make sure you have the most knowledge you can have you can store up here you need to have it all um, that you possibly can because if you do not know how to correctly car can if you do not correctly know how to use your pump and change basal rates and things like that then it does make the initial start of pregnancy very hard in pregnancy for me uh, my levels were constantly changing so I always every day there would be new basal rates going on my pump new temporary basals just to make sure that my blood sugars weren't spiking and going really high because that is obviously very dangerous for your baby to have high blood sugars um, so if you don't know your devices you don't know your condition I'd suggest maybe getting a couple lessons booking in a few hours or sessions with a team just to really know in depth what you're doing I've been diabetic for 17 years so carb counting for me is basically second nature and I've always got on really well with my pump from day one um, so I pretty much knew what I was doing and it's a good job as well because my team were 45 minutes away you also really need to, you need to be prepared and just have a really good mindset and just know that being pregnant is hard in itself and then adding on another thing like your disease making it high risk is also going to add another stress um, so if you feel like you're not going to be able to struggle having morning sickness and constantly having to change like basal rates um, your insulin amounts always having to check your blood sugars always having to make sure you eat maybe you really need to sit down with your team and express this um, there is no reason why diabetes should deter you from having a normal healthy pregnancy and there is no reason why it should make your pregnancy much harder i personally didn't find for me it made it much harder but i don't know maybe that's just because that's all i know maybe pregnancy is easier for another person i don't know i never suffered with morning sickness and yeah so i was very lucky on that one to begin with you really need to just make sure that you can always put your health above everything like no matter how sick you feel you need to find ways to get around it you need to find your remedies just to make sure that your diabetes can continue to be as spot on as it can be the last thing i want to say which is probably the most important just accept and just welcome with open arms all the support you can get from everyone it can be very overwhelming at first i had roughly a 15 person team when i fell pregnant with lilith um, I had n different nurses, different consultants, I had my midwives, I had two different midwives, one my local community midwife and my specialist midwife. You just need to be prepared to have such a big team, constant questions coming at you, lots of um, appointments. I think I would have really struggled if I'd never told my mum as well firsthand um, that I was pregnant because she was there to offer me loads of support in the beginning, which is exactly what I needed. Um, I know it's sometimes not easy but you just need to be very aware and you just need to know and really accept any help or support you get given because people are only doing it for the best interest for you and your baby so if you get like loads of people coming to you with questions and you've got loads of appointments do not let them overwhelm you they're all just to keep you and your baby safe so I hope this video has made sense. I've tried to get my words out as best as I can. If you know me, you know that I can't always voice what I'm thinking. But yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, be sure to click subscribe down below, put a bell notification on. I'd really love for you to join the family. And yeah, I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys! Bye.